Uh, thank you very much, Tom, and welcome everybody to today's session. I hope that you're um, you're well and you've had a good day of teaching today, and that you can hear me um, hear me all right as well. Um, so I've just put a little message in the chat, just asking people to put one thing that they'd hope to take away from today's session, um, just so that I can make sure that um, I'm trying to cover everything that uh, people want to 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 get from today. Um, I've also noticed Shannon has said that she has put a message saying, is she the only one struggling to download the resources? If other people are, um, if other people are struggling to download the resources, then I can put them in the chat and I think you can download them from there. So if that is an issue um, with anybody here, if you're not been able to see them in advance, then please do let us know. Um, I will probably, I'm going to turn off my video after I've done introductions, etc. And I'll probably turn off everybody else's videos just because I'm aware that um, the bandwidth does affect people's uh, audio quality. So, um, so don't be surprised if I suddenly turn your video off. Um, so uh, with me today is Tom from Streamlined and he'll be sorting out any technical issues that anybody has. And I think I've just seen uh, Jeffrey enter. So um, Tom, if you want to make Jeffrey a co-host, that would be great as well. Okay, we're expecting about 50 people today in today's session. So, um, so hopefully it'll be, it'll be a busy one. Um, just to introduce myself very quickly. So my name is Tom Howell. Um, I'm a BTEC teacher and I, I deliver the tech award in a high school in the UK. I've been a BTEC teacher for about 15 years. I've also been involved in qualification development on a variety of tech award, uh, uh, BTEC qualifications at level two and level three. I'm a team leader, standards verifier and examiner um, and uh, moderator on the tech awards. And I also deliver Pearson's uh, train, national training program in the music and music technology sector, as well as for their digital platforms such as MyBTech, etc. Um, but I think the most important information from, from me there is that I um, am a current practitioner and that I am delivering uh, BTEC right now in a centre. So I do understand those pressures that we that we experience in secondary education at the moment and delivering a Key Stage 4 course. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to bring some of that knowledge of the current educational <clears throat> landscape to today's uh, event. Um, so just to uh, to recap what what today's event is about it's the, the BTEC tech award in music practice and it's the 2022 specification so the new specification that has just um for first teaching this september um could i please just um i've asked i've put in the chat feel free to let me know one thing that you'd like to take away from today's session so um if you'd like to put that in then that would be great um or it Equally, I've introduced myself and I've introduced Tom um, and, and Jeffrey's alongside us, but if you'd like to introduce yourself, a bit of your experience, that would also be useful as well. I've seen, um, so nobody else has said that they are struggling with the resources, so um, Shannon, if you're still struggling, I will I'll get, when there's a, a relevant pause, I'll try and get the resources into this chat box for you, or um, if Tom from Streamlined, if you could get the, get an email out to delegates with the with the materials that would also be great. Um, Simon has asked when will this training session be available as a download? Um, I think that's down to streamlined and it's pretty quick. I think um, once uh, once it's finished and we've, we've done the recording, I think it's sent out to delegates uh, quite quickly after that um, within 48 hours. Um, as part of the downloads, you will get the slides, etc., cetera, um, and some of the materials. Okay, so um, Claire has said she's wanting to cover the moderation process. Um, and Lydia is saying she'd like to come away with a clear picture of the assessment windows, the timelines, um, and understand the different mark bands against student examples as she's new to BTEC. Thank you. You're welcome, Lydia. Hopefully we'll cover all that for you. And Alice says a close inspection and analysis of the exemplars to get a better understanding of marking moderation. So um, we will do some of that. I'm going to share, I'm going to save the exemplar materials to the end of today's session. Um, I've, I've delivered this session a couple of times now, and um, I think there's quite a lot of admin and um, changes in terms of processes and what I found in the last couple of sessions is actually it's worth getting those things out of the way first and then we'll cover the, the marking. Um, and Archie says an ECT has taught GCC in training year so trying to get a better knowledge of the spec okay so hopefully we can help you out Archie and Simon says an internal verifier in the old course I don't teach this one but we'll need to guide your staff on this okay brilliant. Um, 
so um, I can see there's people joining. I'm, I apologize for us having to start slightly earlier. Um, that's because um, in my school, the caretaker starts rattling the, uh, the locks at half five. And, um, you know, as you know, as a music teacher, it's important to keep the, uh, the ground staff uh, happy when you want to stay late for rehearsals. So um, I'm just going to turn my, uh, my video off now, uh, hopefully to save people's bandwidth. Um, and Jack saying, subject leader of music at an all boys Catholic school in Liverpool, better understanding of the deliverance of the two internally assessed components, the way in which they're assessed, how the tasks within each component link, first on the BTEC, as have previously been delivering RSL. Okay, Jack, so um, we are, the today's session is about the moderation of the marking process. I will cover a little bit of, um, of delivery. But um, okay, and Anna's also moving across some RSL. Um, I will uh, cover some stuff on delivery, but there is some training which is called Getting Ready to Teach. And in that event, um, there's more of a focus on uh, delivery, teaching and learning strategies, how the whole is more of an overview of the entire course. Um, and I have just been asked to give a couple of dates in late November, early December for those events. So, um, I will, uh, when those dates are confirmed, keep an eye on, um, I think Jeffrey normally posts them in the, or somebody posts them in the uh, Facebook group, or they'll, they'll get posted out, I'll keep an eye on um, the training from Pearson website. Um, Catherine's asked about the recording, it will be emailed to you, Catherine. Um, okay, so we've got quite a few people coming from RSL. So the aims of today's session is to gain an understanding of applying that best fit approach. So for, for many of us, that will be a, a new thing. For some of you moving across from GCSE, perhaps that will be um, that will be uh, something that we're already used to. Um, we're going to look at the Pearson set assignments. So again, these are new for many of us. Um, we're going to have a look at how we use the ESMs, the exam plus standardization material. So as always in BTEC, we have some new three letter acronyms. Um, and then uh, the moderation process, we're going to look at the changes to quality assurance and admin, how the moderated assessment theories will run. So I think that's really useful for a lot of us. Awarding and grading, results and review of moderation, key dates and further supports. So. Um, just before we do um, move on to that, hopefully that covers everything that people want to. Um, I'm just going to take a pause because we need to um, be able to get some of these uh, um, resources out to delegates. So um, I'm just going to uh, wait. And whilst we do that, could you please put your hand up um, if you have uh, delivered the first award, but you're moving across to the tech award? So just raise your hand if you uh, are moving from the the first award to the tech award so you've, you've previous, so we've got a couple of people there three okay so three people who've moved from uh, first award across the tech award okay i'll just put all your hands down um could you please raise your hand if you've moved from the tech award um the previous iteration of the, of the music tech award uh, onto this new 2022 so you've delivered the the old version of the tech award but now you're in the new one okay so a couple of people there uh, claire and matt hi matt um okay and then um finally could you raise your hand if you are brand new to BTEC completely? Okay, four or five. Okay, so the majority of people here are, are people who are new to BTEC um, in any form whatsoever. Okay, brilliant. So those people who are a bit more experienced, if you could um, perhaps help me out, that would be great. Um, okay. Uh, I'm just going to pause. I've just uh, paused my screen share because what I'm going to do, some people are saying they're having issues um, accessing the, uh, the, the materials. So I'm going to pop them in the chat for um, streamlined to send across to you. Okay. Um, thank you for your patience whilst I do this. Um, okay. So.
Okay, I'm afraid that um, the size of the files is too big for me to share with um, Streamlined over the Zoom chat. So I will try and get get it to them uh, in a different way. Um, so I'm just going to continue uh, at the moment. And for those of you that don't have the materials, don't worry. I have got them up on my screen so I can share them hopefully. Um, and we'll get them sent to you. Dave's having trouble with audio, so hopefully, um, uh, Tom, if you could help out with that, that would be great. Um, and uh, Jeffrey's just said that if you want to chat with him as a follow-up to this, there is a um, there is a link where you can uh, book a video call. Um, Jeffrey, let me know if you want me to put that in the chat to everybody, um, and I will do. But it, it might mean you get a very very full calendar. Okay, so let's without further ado, let's move on to the. Um, Ah, okay. Jeffrey's put it in the in the the chat to everyone. Brilliant. So let's move on to um, to some of the changes that are happening. So um, so one of the big changes that is happening to anybody who has been delivering BTEC and for those people that are new is now we have this uh, these marking grids. So this all of the information for this is in the your assessment decision section of the PSA. So PSA stands for Pearson Set Assignment, um, and these are new for all of us, um, and they use this best fit approach. <coughs> There is this really useful video guide and the link is on those um, slides there. In fact, I will do a little tour of the website for you. There's lots of really useful information out there for people. And I think it's just a case sometimes of finding it. Um, but there is a whole series of videos that are really useful on how to apply these mark schemes. We're gonna have a go through it today as well. But the idea is that we're gonna do this best fit approach. I'm gonna show you that um, in, in a second. Um, what's really uh, useful, I think, and this is the same for people who maybe have middle leader or leadership roles within your center, is no matter what tech award it is that is being delivered, they all have this 12 marks per grid and three mark band structure. And that makes these best fit decisions more consistent. So you can do that kind of support within your center. Um, I've certainly find, found that really useful in the center that I'm at, so we're, we're all kind of speaking the same language now, which is really good. Um, so anybody de that delivers tech awards, we all have this same structure, which is great. And hopefully, you know, as we get better as this, you know, teachers, we're really used to things changing, goalposts being moved and having to adapt. Um, and, and unfortunately, this is just one of those same things that happens. But as we move through, I'm sure we will all get better at doing that. And it's going to make um, those decisions much more consistent. Um, What's really useful, I think, as a practitioner is now we have this compensatory uh, marking. So learners take all the marks gained towards the overall qualification. So any any marks that they gain anywhere within the qualification um, is going to be taken to that, not just to the component uh, level, grading but also to the overall qualification grading and I think that's really useful for our learners so we all know those learners that have got spiky profiles I think in music quite often we've all had the learner who can just come in they've got a natural sense of rhythm or, or musicality they can play um, but they don't necessarily know how they've done it they can't necessarily explain they don't necessarily know how to talk about what they've done in the past on the legacy qualifications what's happened is those learners have um, not been able to take they might be a distinction in terms of their playing but they might be a pass in terms of their um, ability to explain what they've done or the process they've gone through the same i see it quite a lot with production students or, or students who are composing they have loads of creative ideas sometimes they can't really explain what it is that they've done on the legacy qualifications, they've been capped at a pass, perhaps, because they haven't been able to get all the criteria at a distinction level. With this new compensatory marking, what's going to happen is those spiky profile learners, they're going to take through all that creativity and that technical ability, all the marks for that. If they get full marks for that part of their profile, they're going to take them all forward and um, they will just... Uh, maybe take some marks forward for their ability to explain their process, but it won't cap them at that that pass. So I think that's really good for the kind of learners that we have um, that take BTEC qualifications. Also, um, it's really important, having spoken like that, I'm, I'm trying really hard not to mention past merit and distinction when we're talking about those grades. And that's because we need to now start thinking in terms of marks um, and numerical marks that are being taken forward. They don't necessarily align with PMD, past merit distinction. That comes at the end when it comes to things like awarding and um, grade boundaries, etc. cetera. Um, so it's really, really important that we need to mark using those descriptors and the marks available. Uh, for each task rather than any kind of historic idea and I'm, we always get people going yeah but how do I know if it's a pass or a merit distinction um, 
we re we really need to be be using the, these marks and these numeric marks um, because internal um, components are now going to go through what we call awarding they're going to have these dynamic mark boundaries so a grade might be subject to the the mark that is then going to relate to a grade is going to change series on series um, now the other thing that's important there that that bottom bullet point about getting the rank order right it's really important to get this rank order right um, in components because the indicated rank rank order from highest to lowest is going to come into play later on so um, and that, that this will become apparent as I go through some of the next slides if when you uh, go through the moderation system which again I'm going to explain in one second um, if when you go through that moderation process for some reason your center rank order is slightly different um, then there will be some amendments that can be made based on feedback from your moderator which will which we will talk about okay so um oh uh pit we've had one second i appear to have a slide out of order so um I will just uh, go ahead with the, the order that we've got. So for those of you that are moving across from um, uh, from the Tech Award and from the old um, first award, so the two legacy qualifications, uh, you'll be pleased to know that resubmissions are um, still allowable, they're still permissible. So um, when you mark learner work, you can make those kind of changes. Uh, you can give learners a chance to resubmit work. So that's if they haven't received the, um, the expect expected potential. So um, just to be clear that that's the same as it has always been. So they will, you can give them general feedback, but you can't give them specific feedback. An example of this might be something along the lines of the general feedback might say, um, you haven't developed your chord sequence sufficiently, um, but you can't say, which will, means the learner then needs to go off, maybe have a look at the key they're in, look at some of the chords they're using, think of um, other ways that they can use different, um, substitute different chords. So you're not giving them specific guidance there. If you send them off and go, oh, I think you really need to go and look at uh, taking an A flat minor chord and inverting it, and then looking at the, um, you know, a five seven cadence, etc., then um, that's obviously given much more specific feedback. So that's not that's not permissible. Okay, so you can still give them when you finish the marking process. You can still give them that uh, that feedback. They can resubmit their evidence, and then you can mark the learner work. Um, after this process, that's when the marks will be finished and will be submitted to the moderator. Um, now, just a quick point on retakes that are here. Um, in terms of retakes, uh, they are um, they are permissible and they are allowed, but um, you can take them once during the program using the Pearson set assignment in subsequent series. Now it is going to be a bit tricky to fit that in and you're going to have to think about how you plan it. Um, PSAs are available in two windows for the internal units in January and in May. Um, but in reality, actually, because they're extended tasks, they come out in October and in February. And um, if you're going to be able to work in those retakes, you're going to end up with some bottlenecks, especially when we've got the component three uh, in year two. So it has to be taken in year two because it is terminal. Um, because of that, it's probably going to be difficult to fit retakes in. And actually, with this compensatory nature, it's unlikely that you're going to want to, to do so. So um, when I've had a look at it with with my team and when we've when we've made some planning, I think that a, a better strategy is to really spend some time on teaching and learning and making sure the teaching and learning is great um, rather than um, planning in for these retakes. Obviously, in certain situations, retakes are necessary, but um, it's going to be quite difficult. And you'll see that when I when I uh, show you the plans in terms of when moderation happens, but they are allowed. OK, so in terms of the assessment series, um, here is the uh, here's the assessment series for you on screen. So you can see that there are these two windows for creative media and music. We have um, the what is called the December January assessment series. So um, and we have the May June assessment series. So for the December and January, you'll have two PSAs, which will be the Pearson set assignments. They will um, come out in early October. In fact, there is one that's currently out already. They came out on the 3rd of October for components one and two. 
during this period at the moment so some of you might be doing this at the moment learners are sitting there although um really in this one it's probably unlikely that learners will have done sufficient teaching and learning to be ready to sit this one unless you've been uh, doing some of the teaching and learning in year nine preparing them for this so learners will be sitting that um component one currently um or if it is next year it would be, be like to be component two perhaps um then they hand in their learner work to you you mark it we do resubmissions um where it is uh, appropriate and you remark them and then the December moderation window opens um, in which you send the centre grades off and there is a deadline of the 15th of December the results of them come out in March now the reason I was talking about it being difficult to fit in retakes is let's imagine you've just done component one now you want learners to retake in the next possible window well the, the results don't come out until March um, the uh, the moderation window is at the start of April and um, the PSA is released in February. So you can see how that's quite difficult to fit in um, and why I would think that from a teaching and learning point of view, for my learners, if they didn't do quite as well as I wanted them to on component one, I would rather spend that time really giving some quality teaching and learning on component two and allowing them to sit that um, and get the best grades they can there. I think that's probably more likely to pick up their, their marks overall. But obviously, you know your centre, you know your learners, you know your multi-academy trust policies, et cetera, better than I do. And so it will be an individual decision. Um, so in terms of this second window, what's going to happen is uh, those PSAs will come out in February um, for both components one and two. So both components are available in both windows between February and April will be where you are sitting those assessments. Um, learners will be doing that learner work. You will then um, mark them. You need to fit in that window for resubmissions if appropriate. And then um, that assess that moderation window will happen between April and June results on results day in August just to um just to be uh just to be clear because we are talking about internal units but just in terms of your planning you're also going to have to consider that in in year two or in the final year because it is a terminal uh, component in the final year of the qualification so you might be delivering it over three years nine ten eleven or um 10 11 so in the final year you have to do component three which is a 23 hour extended externally assessed task which comes out in january and is um, entered in may um, so i've just seen a couple of comments come in so i'm just going to pause to uh to refer to them so jack says just to confirm uh, for the best deliverance component one should be assessed in may or june of year one and component two in december january of year two um that yeah well so we'll come on that is the recommended way that these qualifications have been designed to be delivered um and i think it gives your learners the best opportunity to have an appropriate amount of teaching and learning followed by an assessment window because remember during these assessment windows you have to um, make sure that they have had sufficient teaching and learning to be able to engage in the assessment tasks independently um so yeah jack that that is the recommended way to be delivered so claire um that's fine you don't need to be setting component one assignment at the moment and you can wait till february um that is probably the best practice um because you know i think for um component one it is a 36 hour 36 guided learning hour qualification uh sorry component so in order to give your learners that 36 hours it's pretty unlikely you'll have been able to do that uh, during september uh, unless you're teaching uh, five hours a week or, or something uh, to your year 10 students so um so it's yeah it's unlikely they'll have had sufficient teaching and learning to have sat it at the moment um that's not to say people um aren't doing it i think there are some people that have taught uh, some of the content in year nine and are then going to sit there that at the moment okay so um in terms of the moderation process so um i'm just i think a lot of people wanted to talk about what might happen before we get into the nuts and bolts of marking so um in this scenario that i was talking about your learners will have done this teaching and learning at the moment in the autumn term you might do a dry run or a mock assessment at some point during um, the spring term and then the, the pearson set assignment for component one for example comes out your learners are given a certain number of hours in which to complete that task it's handed in to you as normal it will then be marked um it will be marked and then um 
you will do your whatever internal moderation that you feel is appropriate in your center or in your multi-academy trust so there is now no no need for internal verif verifiers as a particular role there is no you do not have to have an internal um verification process as mandated by Pearson but obviously I think for our own um, well-being and our own our sense of uh, you know anxiety teachers like to have somebody to second mark and I'm pretty sure most of us in whatever trust or whatever academy chain or whatever um, group of schools we're going to have somebody that we want to look over our work so your learners have done their work they've done the resubmissions you've marked it and moderated it um, and you're ready to go and then what will happen is those final marks are then inputted on Edexcel online. Um, you will be assigned a moderator and learners will be randomly selected by the Pearson systems to choose 10. For most of you, it will be 10. Um, just look at that table at the bottom. So if a cohort size of 1 to 10, all of them will be taken. If your cohort is 11 to 100, um, then your sample size will be 10 out of those 100. If your sample size is between 101 and 200, then it's 15. And um, more than 200, it will be 20. Now, just to be clear about what a cohort um, counts as, if you have some learners who are in year 10 who are taking component one in the um, the May series and you have some year 11s who are resitting, then that counts as a cohort. It's not done on registrations or year groups or anything like that. It is simply the number of learners that you have sitting that Pearson set assignment at that time. That will, that's what counts as your cohort size. So if that's going to push you over 100, um, then you, you're going to be uh, asked for 15 learners. I think for almost all of us, um, it will be 10 learners. So 10 learners will be selected, um, randomly selected by Pearson Systems, sampled by the moderator. And before that, what's going to happen is you're going to um, be able to have a conversation with the moderator to choose a period where there can be some kind of feedback. Um, so um, in that preparation time, there will be a date that can be, that can be decided for some feedback. Then what's going to happen is um, that sample gets confirmed and the rest, the requested sample will have that highest and lowest marks, which is why I said the rank order was really important for you. Um, and um, after that, then if the requested sample doesn't include that highest and lowest marks achieved, those learners will then, there is a chance they'll need to be uploaded in addition to what has been randomly selected. Um, so we need to have that rank, that top and bottom of the rank order. Once that's happened, then all that's going to happen is for those 10 learners, the learner work and an assessment record sheet um, will be uploaded via the learner work transfer system um, for the beginning of the early moderation window. So if that's December the 1st for the December, January series and April the 3rd for the May, June series. Both internal components will be sampled if any entries have been made and this will be conducted by the same moderator. Um, I'm just going to pause for a second because um, I've realised that my notes are uh, out of order. So just give me one second to confirm that I've got everything uh, covered that I wanted to. Um, I'll pause for any questions at this point. So if you do have any questions about that um, that process in terms of the uh, the moderation systems, then please use us as an opportunity to ask those questions. Okay, looks like there's no questions coming through. So I think we will we are okay to move on. And I have um, relocated my notes. So um, hopefully we are okay. And I've just double checked and I think I've got everything sorted. Okay, lovely. Um, so let's move on to the next slide. So the moderation process. So after you've done that preparation, what's going to happen is the moderator will contact your quality nominee. So every centre has a quality nominee or there will be a designated person um, at the centre and they're going to ask for a programme lead. So I think somebody in the chat uh, when we were preparing for today's session said that they were a lead IV. We no longer need lead IVs for these tech awards, um, but you will need a programme lead for the qualifications. So it's no longer a role that has to be um, registered on Edexcel Online, but obviously you need a program lead and what's going to happen is the moderator will get in touch with your quality nominee who's usually the senior leadership team member in charge of BTEC qualifications 
um, and uh, the program and get the detail contact details for the program lead. Like I said, there'll be this mutually convenient convenient time to give feedback once they've completed uh, moderation. They will complete their moderation and where needed, they can give you that direct feedback. So one of the things that as an SV and also as a um, as a uh, head of subject that I like about the standards verification process is even if there is a block that's going to happen or a, a you know, center action required, as it's now called, um, you still get that dialogue with the center and just say, look, this is slightly off and this bit was really good. And I think you just need to tighten up a little bit there. And almost every single time uh, people get through on the second sample, especially in music, you know, we've got very high rates of people um, getting through the second sample in, in, in music. So what's really nice with this new version is that we're gonna have exactly that same process. So you enter your grades, you arrange a, a time for feedback with your moderator, the moderator has a look through, and they, if required, they can give you specific feedback on what needs to be changed. You then have a window in which you can amend those grades. Now you can amend any of those grades. So let's imagine you've got 99 learners who are on your, um, uh, in your cohort, you send off 10 and they say, right, well, you know, for um, it was all great, but on marking grid uh, two, I think you were just slightly harsh on this and this aspect. You can then change the numerical grade for every single learner, all 99 learners based on that feedback. Then when that's happened, that all has to happen by the, uh, the deadline. Um, now, if there are some significant changes, um, then there can be some um, extra samples required. Also, if, like I said about the rank order, if those changes change the rank order, then you might need to have some extra sampling um, happen at that point. Um, and that's how the process is going to go. So I think it's I think it's a good process in terms of um, it's going to be good for the centres and it's going to be good for the moderators and the learners. Um, so once that has happened, like I said, we've got this mark amendment. Um, following moderator feedback, you've got two weeks to amend your initial marks. Any learner's marks can be uh, uh, mod, uh, amended, and um, the published deadline will be when it, that changes, and after that, no more amendments can be made. So the outcome from moderation. Um, once you've had that, uh, the moderation, the feedback, and those amendments, the moderator will review your final grades on the system. Um, and they will also produce a written report which will be published on results day. If you're reasonably accurate, they will be awarded. If they're not within a reasonable degree of vari uh, deviation, and remember that you'll have had this feedback beforehand. So if they're still, if, if following that feedback, they're still um, not within a reasonable degree of deviation, then an adjustment will be applied. And that's why it's important to have that rank order as well. Um, so where those adjustments are made, the pattern of difference between your centers marks and the moderators will be taken into account. And that's going to hopefully bring them into uh, this uh, being applied nationally. Unless your center has been demonstrably inconsistent, mark adjustments will maintain the center's rank order. Um, and there, we think that uh, this is going to reduce about 65% of your admin required to deliver and assess the internal opponents. Uh, uh, internal components sorry now there is another video there and there's a link to it there i will again show you that on the, the website but um uh, again a really useful video i think they're all under 10 minutes and there might be one that's 12 but they're all between five and 10 minutes um so helen says do we have to change marks based on the feedback from my gcc days if it was reasonable the marks remain as they are okay so helen just to, to reiterate the process you you uh put your numerical marks onto Edexcel online. A sample of probably 10 of those learners will be selected by your moderator. They will then give you feedback on the marks, um, uh, specific feedback on those marks. You then have two weeks to amend those marks based on that feedback. You don't have to, but you can. Um, and um, I would probably say that it's a good idea if, if the feedback says that you're you're out on certain things or you're um, and you can amend every single learner's marks and then after that is when um, the final marks of the moderator will be looked at against your final marks and that's when any adjustments will be made if required I hope that's cleared up the process Helen try to keep it as streamlined as possible but if any any questions following this event then um, uh, this video is honestly very useful okay now 
just quickly, is there anybody who is in a consortium arrangement? If you know what that means, then you know that you are. If you know, you know, as they say. Um, could you just raise your hand if you're in a consortium arrangement? Okay, so nobody's got their hand up, so I'm going to presume that that means none of you are in a consortium arrangement, but just in case anybody's watching this recording who is. Um, so if you're as a part of a consortia, you will be sampled and the adjustments will be applied across all the centres within your consortia. And remember that cohort that counts as the entire um, consortium as well. So that's where we might be getting into that 100, 200 um, learners being uh, registered. Um, and that's where it's even more essential to make sure you've got that internal standardisation because that's going to happen across the consortium. And if you are in a consortium, please make sure you have one programme lead. They're going to take responsibility. Um, so I don't, that doesn't seem to apply to anybody here, but just in case anyone's watching the uh, recording. Okay, um, so before we move on to the mark grids, then this is just a little summary about quality assurance. Um, so we think, like I said, that approximately 65% of the admin has been reduced. Um, this is a screenshot of the uh, quality assurance page, which I will take you to. And uh, there is a link, like I said, on this slide up there. And there's a, a nice little summary um, of what it is that has changed. So like I've said, no longer need a lead IV. We have a program lead that is recommended, but you don't need to register. Um, you still need to do standardization of the BTEC team, which I'm gonna go through um, in the second half of today's assessment. No more need for an assessment plan or internal verification plan. We're going to use the Pearson set assignments now instead of these assignment briefs. Um, again, I'll quickly go through them. I, I'll go through them in a bit more detail in the getting ready to teach event, but I will um, just have a quick summary of the, of the tasks uh, in today's event. You no longer need to IV those assignment briefs, so they are sent out for every series. So PSAs uh, come out and you have to use those ones for that particular series. Um, you do have to create an assessment record, but I'm going to show you in a second. It is much more simpler and streamlined. You still give feedback to learners. Annotation of learner work is still recommended to assist both you, your colleagues, uh, learners, and also in the moderation process. Internal standardization is required if there are multiple assessors on the course. Um, and also, we think that it's best practice anyway. But yeah, if you've got two classes, for example, two assessors, they're going to count as one cohort. So you might have a music tech, and a, a music performance uh, pathway. I think a lot of learners, uh, a lot of centres uh, do that, um, or they might have enough learners registered to be able to deliver two groups simultaneously. You're going to have to do some kind of standardisation there just to make sure that because you're going to be all those learners will be marked as one cohort. Um, no longer do you need lead IV authorization for resubmission. So the assessor themselves can say that a learner um, can have a resubmission still have that opportunity for internal assessment retake. Um, no more standards verification it is a moderation process and um, you can well, for, for a lot of tech awards, you can have that external component reset opportunity, but not for us because we've got this long and thin task based um, uh, assessment in the final year. OK, so that's a summary of uh, basically the changes. So here we've got a screenshot of two documents, the assessment record and a new tracker. I'm going to um, actually show you these in real life and then I will show you where to download all these resources from. But first up, here is the assessment record, much more streamlined and much easier. Um, so you have program title, candidate number and learner name, component number and title, assessment name, the series and the year. Um, so all of that can be uh, pre-populated. I actually use a uh, mail merge uh, to, to just put all my candidate numbers and learner names on there. Um, and then when it comes, you can also put all the tasks and the learning outcomes here. So that can all be pre-populated for you in advance and then for each learner you give them the assessor mark um, if there is a resubmission that can go on the same sheet you can just put that underneath um, you can add more rows if required and you add up the total mark you give them general comments learner signature assessor signature and both of them are dated and that is it um, so when your learner is sent off, um, is sampled that is all that is expected to be sent you'll get the learner you'll send up the learner work and this record for um, for each of your learners. Um, you can create your own version. You just need to make sure that everything that is on this sheet is also on your own version. Um, so that's the new assessment uh, record sheet. Um, and this is also quite nice. This is, um, so instead of using uh, my BTEC or internally tracking um, your, uh, 
learners we now have this spreadsheet which is our tracker so you can see here i've got a learner called britney spears and i'm going to mark their work for component one so i click on this square here and you can see here i've got the the marking grid so these the, these marking grids for component one i've got my learner's name up here i can add their registration number etc so i think that this learner is in this band i double click and i can double click on here um, and I can go through and decide that uh, that learner it gets a nine. Um, perhaps here, I think they're here and they're going to get a seven. OK, so these are obviously just all made up. I'm going to put my comment here and another comment here. Um, maybe they uh, are particularly they're around here on this one. So they're going to get a five. And you'll see up at the top, it is um, calculating the grade, calculating the percentage. Um, I might be looking at their learner work here. Let's give them a seven. And then they're particularly good on this last one. So I'm going to give them a 12. OK, again, comment and comment. Now, from this, you can generate a, an individual record sheet. Um, but if I now go back to the um, if I go back to the overall oops just save that if I go back to their their marks sorry the little window seems to have disappeared that I need um Right, I think this might be because I'm using this on a Mac at the moment and it doesn't uh, like my version of uh, of Excel. But this then um, copies those grades across into the um, into that overall sheet that I showed you right at the start. Um, but you can see that's a really good tracking uh, sheet. It calculates the grades. Um, I will find out how to get it back onto the other the other page in a second and hopefully um yeah I'm not sure why it's not going back um and then uh, you'll be able to see um that it does it copies that back onto the the overall tracking grid and then you can use that to uh, apply that rank order okay um so a few questions that have come in uh from Helen do we have to oh I've uh, uh I've uh, answered that one, I think. Um, uh, C Blessing says, does this mean they're only sampled at the end of the course or can they be sampled after component one? So they are sampled uh, every time you enter them. So for each cohort. So if you were to enter learners now, uh, if you if you have got learners that are working now in the January cohort um, for the January assessment, then they will be uh, sampled during this window. If you then had some other learners that are going to be doing component one in the spring, uh, then they would be sampled at that point. So yeah, every time you enter learners for any series, sampling will take place. And if you have uh, components for both, um, then uh, they will both be sampled. Lydia says, if there's time, please could you explain the internal resubmissions in more detail? Is this separate to a reset? So resubmissions, Lydia, um, the rules of that are on a document that I'll show you where you where you can find it on the quality assurance places, but uh, pages. But the rules for resubmissions are if there is a learner who you think um, given a little bit more time could independently improve their grade. So for some reason, they haven't quite got what you expected them to get. You can give them up to 15 days. So it could be one day, it could be up to 15 days in order to independently improve their mark without any. They have to have met the original deadline. They need to um, have a realistic chance of moving up a, uh, you know, moving their grade up uh, without further teaching and learning. And if that happens, then you can uh, give them up to 15 days to resubmit that work with amendments. You can give them general feedback, but not specific feedback. So hopefully that um, that helps. If um, anybody else wants to chip in uh, on, the, on the chat about resubmissions, then uh, please feel free to help Lydia out. Yep, so resubmissions are still up to 15 working days. Um, so C Blessing says, so do we just add the same front sheet or only the current unit? So you would have a one of these assessment records for each component. So if you have a look on the screen at the moment, you can see we've got component number and title and the assessment series and year. So let's say I was doing that at the moment, component number would be component one. 
um, and then assessment series and year would be January 2023. Um, and then when my learners sit it again, sit component two, perhaps uh, next year, it would be January 2024 and say component two. Um, and if they were to do a retake, then obviously uh, you would change the dates on that and they'd have a new assessment record for that. Okay, um, hopefully that works. Uh, that's okay for everybody. Um, we have nearly got through the um, admin. In fact, what we're going to do now is we're going to do some marking. Um, yes, so what I'm going to do is before we do the marking, um, Claire's asked a question, are there any free resources that can be used? So before we do the marking, I'm going to do the quick a website tour because I think it's really important. There's lots of stuff I'm going to be referring to. There's lots of places where we can get information on Pearson, um, on Pearson's website, and not a lot of people know where it is. And I'm sure Jeffrey finds that frustrating because there's there is some really good stuff out there. So the first thing that you need to do is um, using your favorite uh, web search engine, um, you need to uh, type in um, qualifications dot Pearson dot com. Um, and that will take you to the Pearson qualifications web page. I mean, or maybe not. Oh, no, because I've typed it qualifications applications sorry um you can just type in tech award 2022 into your search engine that will come up um but just if you ever need to find it the long way around you go to qualifications.pearson.com you can either search via sorry i'm just trying to move the chat box out of my way um you can either search via qualifications and go to uh btech tech awards here or you can go via subject and um find music so we're going to go to qualifications we're going to go to btech tech awards and then you can um choose m for music practice go to music practice and it'll either choose the uh the legacy qualification or the new one the only reason that you'll need to go to the legacy one is when you're thinking about component three component three hasn't changed much from um the legacy qualification so it will be really useful for you to go there for things like past papers examiners reports mark schemes etc so um that would be the only time to go to that one but for everything else go to music practice 2022 and um, this is where you can get the specification and lots of different materials that will support you, some useful documents at the bottom. But most importantly is here, where it's this tab that says course materials. So when you go to course materials, you um, can then filter it further. So the specification and the sample assessment materials. So the sample assessment materials are the ones for the, um, uh, the internal components and also for the um, component three, the external assessment. Um, so there is, I don't know if many of you have noticed this, but there's an additional component three one on there now that you can have a look at. So you've got two to look at there. There's, um, I think there's now three or four on the 2016 specification, and there'll obviously be another one this summer as well. So by the time it comes to your current year tens sitting component three, we should have six or seven past papers, and we'll have two series that have been marked and have um, some feedback from the lead examiner. So, um, so that's where you can find those sample assessment materials. Um, if we go to internal assessments, the next button down, this is where these current PSAs are. So you'll see what's really useful now is we're going to really quickly build up a bank. These are going to be delivered twice a year in both windows for both components. So, you know, by this time next year, we'll have three versions of component one and three versions of component two that we can look at. And that will include all the lead moderator reports, um, mark schemes, etc. So at the moment, people might feel a little bit like we're scrabbling about in the dark, but I think very quickly we're going to have that bank up. And there's also going to be example learner work um, from each one. Um, the statements of purpose is probably less important than some of you would like, um, but the question was about other free resources. So if you go to teaching and learning, this is where you can download those two documents I just showed you, the uh, assessment tracker tool and the assessment record template. Um, curriculum planning, there is a three and a two year planning document there. Um, the materials we're going to go through today are here, the um, exemplar standardization materials for component one and component two. Now it's just um, very quickly before we move on to these, it's worth saying that this is going to replace what has usually been used as Oscar for um, 
for centres. So that would be where the lead antenna verifier has to download some materials, make sure they standardise the entire team and, and sign that off um, on Edexcel Online. Now what we're going to do is build up this really big bank of exemplar standardisation materials. Like I say, new materials every um, every series and that means you're going to have this archive that you can refer back to and they are available um, here on the website. So the expectation is that you're going to download these and refer to them um, whenever you're doing that moderation process or that internal marking process in your centre. Um, so that's where you can download them and that's what we're going to have a brief look at today. There is a mapping document here which is going to show you, those of you that are moving across from the Old Tech Award and the Legacy First Award across to the new qualification. Um, any past training content, so those of you that were asking about the um, uh, ways to teach and assess, there's a, a one hour video um, there that you can access and I think there will be a version of this training that will be put up there as well eventually. And there is also this teacher guide um, which gives you some ideas of some teaching and learning strategies to help you. All of those are free and available on the Pearson website there. So um, some really useful resources there. Um, I can see a couple of questions have just come in so I'm just going to double check. Um, yeah, that's true, Jeffrey. So, yeah, the assessment, the one, the one thing that's kind of different from using something like my BTEC or your own internal ones is we, you can see we're already up to the 42nd version of the music practice assessment tracker tool. Um, and there will be updates from time to time, as Jeffrey says, when I, um, when I went on to the, um, the tracker and unfortunately it's not been able to show me it. In fact, what I might do is just close it down and open it again. Um, when you go on, there is a Google form, uh, sorry, a Microsoft form that you can fill in and it asks you, um, it, it will then email you when a new version comes out. So let's just see if that, if that helps us. So enable macros. Um, so I normally do this on my machine at school. Right, here we go. So this is when you open it up and you enable the macros, this is what happens. You can click on this button there and it's a hyperlink that takes you to a Microsoft form. And you can say you're in your name, your center, your email address. You can say, I want to know about music practice and it will email you every time there's a new version available. Um, because like Jeffrey says, there's going to be some updates, but this is where you can go to student records and our Britney Spears marks haven't been moved across. Um, because I think it crashed. There is a tutorial library there, and that again, you can subscribe for updates there, but that's gonna be really useful for us in order to create our, um, our uh, rank order, et cetera. Okay, um, and instructions, it's, it's quite easy to, to work out, hopefully, as long as you're not using the version of Excel that I have, clearly. Okay, um, I've got a question from, um, Anna, who says, when will the teacher's resources be available to buy? They were due to be released in September. Thanks. That is a different uh, part of Pearson. Um, that's the, the commercial arm. So obviously, uh, you know, uh, we, we don't, I can't really comment on that side of it because this is about teaching and learning and delivery and assessment. Um, and there's the, co the commercial arm where they, they sell resources um, and, and publish resources. So it's a different, a, a different part of the business to the one that Jeffrey and I work in, I'm afraid, Anna. So I'm afraid I can't update you on that. Okay, what we're going to do, we're about halfway through. So I think um, it's a good time to have a little pause um, you're probably bored of hearing my voice. So um, if you could get the materials ready for the, the exemplar materials. So I've shown you where you can download them if you don't have them yourself or if they've been sent to you. And I'm going to email them to, um, uh, to Streamlined. Um, and I will get, uh, get back to you as soon as, uh, as, soon as possible. Uh, Tom, the, the only thing I could suggest is that you use the support portal as, um, you know, that's Pearson wants, that's where, that's where all kind of feedback has to go, really. So, um, yeah, if you could get your finance team to go through the, um, the support. So anywhere on the Pearson qualification team uh, pages, if you go to support, um, it'll take you through to uh, being able to fill out a form um, and somebody will get in touch with you. Normally, I mean, when I, whenever I have to put a support thing in, it comes back within within 24 hours or something, I get an email back. Um, sorry, I can't be any more help than that, Tom. Okay, so if we just have a couple of minutes to get those resources sorted and I'll try and get them onto the, um, uh, get them onto the, the chat as well.
Okay, I'll be back with you in two minutes. Okay, so unfortunately, it's looking like those files are too big for me to share. So um, I'm going to have to, um, if anybody doesn't have access to the materials, then um, I will show them to you. Okay, so um, let's just uh, go across to the materials. So we're going to start with, for today, we're just going to look at component one. We don't have loads of time in today's session, and I'm sure people will have lots of questions. So we're just going to look at component one. We are going to do a recording on going through the component two materials. Um, and I'm just going to look at the high and the, the low. So um, please, if you do have these materials, or in fact, can I just see, has anybody been through them already and knows the marks etc so raise your hand if you've already been through these and have already seen the marks for these uh, materials okay looks like nobody has oh something just coming on the chat ah oh, brilliant so jeffrey's put a, a link about the um the public resources thanks jeffrey um Okay, so it looks like no one has been been through them. So can I please ask you to try and let's try and do this for real, because I think it's a much more useful learning uh, process if we do. So don't scroll through and find out the grades. We're going to try and um, try and tackle this together. Okay, so um, if you could go to the the folder on um, the exemplar standardization materials and we're going to have a look at music practice component one, the high learner. So you know this is going to be a high learner. Um, and the high learner work so just for context so the learners at this center so we do like to have this exemplar material on real learner work now just uh, as a, a quick caveat obviously this qualification has only just started so we don't actually have real learner work for these particular um, PSAs that came out so it was adapted by the lead moderator for this for these components to fit so as we go forward we will have this massive hopefully um, wealth of, of stuff that we can draw on um, and we'll have real learner work. So this was real learner work from the previous tech award that has been repurposed. Um, so just to let you know that before we go forward. Um, okay, so in this context, what's happened is the assessor issued the PSA as published, the learners were required to explore this theme of contrast and I'll go through the PSA for you in, in, in a second. Um, this learner presented their evidence for each of the two tasks separately. They produced a PowerPoint uh, where they provide links to the stimulus material they've listened to. Um, and uh, they've embedded these three ideas, their own musical products. For learning outcome A, they have explored four musical styles, reggae, pop, punk, samba, and delta blues. You can only explore a maximum of two styles from popular music, but in this qualification, jazz and blues is not qualified as popular music. It's its own, uh, own group. Um, so we're just going to look at learning aim A 
for this learner. Um, it's important to note the assessor has a responsibility for ensuring the authenticity, um, and that comes from the uh, the signatures that you saw in that document I showed you before. Okay, so what does the PSA look like? So you'll know that there is one that's on the website at the moment that's slightly different. So you can have a look at what's the same and what's different. But you can see that learners were asked to um, contribute to a, a musical instrument company, and that they had a theme called contrast. The first thing they had to do was create this styles portfolio. Um, and for each style, they need to look at the compositional features or comment on the compositional features, melody, harmony, tonality, rhythm, structure, and also for the sonic features, instrumentation, texture, timbre, and production. Their portfolio needed to have at least one short musical example of between 12 and 30 seconds and individual commentary that supports their points. Um, approximately five hours to complete task one with a total of 24 marks. So that is what we're going to look at now. Um, could you please raise your hand if you do not have access to this learner work? Okay, just Shannon. Right, so what I'll do, Shannon, I've got the PowerPoint in front of me here. Um, I don't know if, if you want to set a, a, a direct message up to me and every time you've read the slide, if you would like to... Um, open that up that would be great um for those of you that are needing to uh it, we should probably look at the marking question please sorry i've done this slightly in the wrong way okay let's get the marking grids up and i will put them in the chat as well um come on finder where are you so for everybody we're looking at I'm going to put this document in the chat here, which is the, the PSA itself. Um, you should be able to open that up. And we're going to go to have a look at the marking grids and we're going to look at the strategy for best fit. So you'll see that I, so it's in the chat now. So everybody, um, I've sent it to uh, Tom, but I'm also going to put it in for everybody. So Tom can email it if people uh, can't, can't get it, but you should all have a PDF of the document that's on the screen at the moment. Okay, so I mentioned that um, that every time you get a PSA, there's going to be this section called um, mark, guidance for teachers. So guidance on setting this a task, and I go through this more in the other training, um, how you submit the evidence, etc., which is what I've kind of gone through. What we want to look at now is this bit here, assessor guidance. So your role as an assessor, as well as somebody who's delivering, and then making your assessment decision. So in terms of using best fit, this is going to be in every single series. It's really worth reading it before you uh, mark any of the learner work. Um, so you're first required to make a holistic judgment on which mark band closely matches the learner's response. Then you need to look within those bulleted traits and see which one is more um, uh, that combination that provides the descriptor more fully. Once you've put them within a mark band, you want to have a more refined judgment as to how well they've completed that. And you need to look at the band above and below. And there's further guidance here, but we're going to go through this at the moment. Um, and it's important to watch that video um, that, I, that I talked about before. So in terms of uh, the further guidance here, um, if, they, um, if the learner's response meets the requirements of the descriptor fully, you should be prepared to award full marks within that band. The top mark in the mark band is used for learner's response that is as good as can realistically be expected in that mark band. If they only barely meet the requirements of the descriptor, but it's better than the previous one, then you should be awarding marks at the bottom of the band. Um, the middle marks of the mark band are for learner's response that is a reasonable match to the descriptor. So a balance between some characteristics that are fully met and others that are only barely met. And if there's none, if there's no evident, where there is no evidence worthy of credit, no marks must be awarded. So here's the marking grid. And a lot of people have the first uh, comment that we uh, I normally get, and I've seen this um, in other training events, is people say, well, why have you got the same marking grid twice? Because it looks exactly the same. Well, actually, if you look a bit more closely, this is comprehensive knowledge and understanding of how musical elements have been used to create compositional features and this one is the sonic features um if you can't remember what composition on sonic are melody harmony tonality rhythm and structure so how well have they commented on that and sonic features is instrumentation timbre texture and production so um when you're looking at these two grids remember that actually in terms of learners being able to hand in that portfolio and being able to respond to um how musicians have 
manipulated the elements of music to create stylistic features, etc., then um, we're giving you 24, they're giving learners 24 marks of being able to, to talk about that stuff. So it's quite a lot of marks. They're split into two. So maybe that's going to influence your teaching and learning. Um, so in terms of that mark band, like we said, so you make a holistic mark, you're going to look at this learner work. Let's imagine you go, right, well, I feel like it's in this band here, the four to six mark band, because you, you'll read through that. That's my gut feeling. Um, and then we've got that word adequate there. So um, you might look at that and you might look a little bit lower. You might look above and you might think, and it's important to remember on these mark grids that adequate is six marks. If they fully do that, if they fully complete what's in there, that's going to award them six marks. So you're going to look through here and if you think, right, yeah, they def adequate. I think that's adequate. I think it's in there. It's not quite as good as good. And actually they've only put examples for some of them. Um, then you can give them six marks within that band if it's some and adequate. Um, if, however, you think, oh, you know, we're actually getting close to few on there, then it might be that you move down to uh, to five marks or, or even four if you're thinking it maybe some of the knowledge isn't always adequate and maybe there's a bit more errors than I'd like, but it's not many errors. Um, that might give them four. OK, so that's how you apply those mark bands. We've got mark bands one, two, three and four and three marks within each and a maximum of 12. First 12 marks, like I say, for compositional features, second 12 marks for um, sonic features. Okay, let's get to the learner work. So um, I think it was Shannon. I'm going to give everybody, should we say about 10 minutes, I think, to have a look through this um, and to apply grades just for that those first two grids. That's all we're looking at, marks for those first two grids. Shannon, I'm going to full screen this here. If you want to put a direct message set up to me, I'll open the chat on my screen and... Um, if you just say next or done or something, then um, I will move on to the next slide. OK. If anyone else has any questions, feel free to uh, put them in the chat. But otherwise, I'll see you in 10 minutes. It's probably worth saying that these videos are embedded and can be played. Um, I'm not going to do that now. So Claire's asked a question about um, uh, can students with learning needs record evidence via video or MP3? Yes, definitely. There's no need for it to be written. Um, we're encouraging as many different forms as possible and the usual access arrangements uh, will apply. So um, that's normally handled by your exams officer and your exams team. But um, things like extra time for using dictionaries or scribes, um, or readers etc then all of those things um you need to cr create the same evidence i think during your teaching and learning and then that application is made to pearson
Okay, so um, I've gone through the, the the slides for task one with Shannon. Um, Shannon, if there's any other ones that you would like me to go back to, um, please let me know. Um, and so I think if we just give people another, it's it's four forty seven now on my watch. So if I give people another three minutes, just to have a look through the grid um, and uh, come up with a mark, please don't share those marks at the moment. Keep them to yourself. Write them down on a piece of paper. Maybe make any notes. So remember, we're just looking at the first two twelve mark grids, um, and we're just looking at those first. I think it's sixteen slides of the PowerPoint. So Shannon, I'm not sure if you're able to um, access the PSA as well. So I've just put that on screen for you there. And hopefully, Helen can't hear anything. Okay, just give me one second. Okay, just I've just put a message there just checking. Okay, so Shannon does have the PSA, brilliant. Um Helen has said that she can't hear me. Can people put a, a thumbs up or hands up if you can hear me? Okay. Yeah, okay, Lydia says yeah. Okay, brilliant. All right, hands down again. So Tom, if you could get in touch with Helen Wellsby. She's saying she's having audio issues. Thank you. Okay, last minute, I think. Ah, oh, thanks, Alistair. That's a good uh, that's a good tip. So if you click live transcripts, then you you can get okay, thanks, Helen. I don't know why I said thanks, Helen. There she can't hear me. Okay, so um it's uh, about ten two now, which is where I said we were going to finish. So, could anybody raise their hand if you you don't have a mark for those two grids? Okay, so we've all gone through. Um, so, before we go through any marks or any kind of specific things, I would just like some general feedback, perhaps on on this um, on this. Uh, this submission. So remembering that it has been adapted from the, the Legacy Tech Award. Um, what do people think um, in terms of the way that learner, um, what do people, and hopefully we've just welcomed back Helen, what do people think in the way that that learner approached um, the task um, for Learning Aims A? Any general comments from people on that? Okay, so Anna's used a word from the, um, from the marketing bridge, comprehensive. Anything else? Any general feedback that you might give that learner? Good knowledge, well presented. Okay, so do you think the presentation aided the moderator or the assessor? Okay, so Alistair's saying perhaps more examples for top mark. Can you be a bit more specific, Alistair? What would you like to see more examples of? Um, shows detailed theoretical understanding of the chosen styles, points explained with well with examples. Okay, so Lydia's saying there, there are good examples. Um, Alistair's saying maybe you need more. So we've got a slight kind of... Uh, uh, disagreement there but maybe it's just that you want some specific type of examples Alistair 
Um, so if you care to expand on that, or maybe Lydia, um, why you think it, that it had full examples. Um, uh, George says there seemed to be a lack of production knowledge, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps, and maybe, um, maybe that is down to the teaching and learning maybe you know that the the genres selected weren't uh didn't allow for that as much um uh helen says a question couldn't make the link to the theme can you explain how this meets the contrast theme well, maybe is that a piece of a uh, feedback that you uh, want to talk about um to this learner but i would say have a look at the marking grids for the first for learning aim a and um, if we're thinking about just marking this work dispassionately and the marking grids that we've got in front of us, um, maybe that's a point for discussion in, in this group. To what extent does this need to meet that contrast theme? So um, um, now I've I um, apologize if, if I pronounce your, your name, but I think it's Dianave. Um, good understanding, not much use of sheet music or written notation as evidence. Um, I worry our students would struggle with this. So I wonder if this is okay. Should we make sure to include some element of written notation? So what do people think? If you could um, respond to that, that would be that would be really good. So do, do we think that there needs to be more notation or written stuff or are there other ways? I think somebody asked about, can they have MP3s, videos, blogs, podcast style submissions? What, what do people think? Um, Alistair says maybe a wider variety of examples. Um, Lydia, analysis of a specific song, song and examples for each style. So that's what she thought was good evidence. So she thought it was good that there was analysis of a specific song from that genre. Now I'm presuming that that's a song that they learnt. Perhaps there was some I'd, uh, the exam ready is a, uh, a, a task, a, a term that is used a lot in my my trust at the moment. So perhaps there were some activities to get these learners exam ready based on those tracks um, so that they might have been doing some revision on that or some, um, you know, some some analysis as a group or something. Uh, Alice says a wider variety of examples. So, yeah. Um, no one's come. Um, come back to uh, Dianov's uh, question about written notation. Okay, so George agrees. So would struggle with if there was more written notation. Um, so can anybody, and Helen's, okay. So can anybody give them a bit of reassurance or um, do we think they need more notation? Do we wanna see a printout of a score or a lead sheet or a, you know chord diagrams or something downloaded from ultimate guitar and annotated yeah so notation um especially if you're on a, a carousel um which i think a lot of centers are for key stage three um or a two-week timetable or something something like that then something's got to give hasn't it in, in the music curriculum um, and we can all write our curriculum maps and our statements of intent and until the cows come home but something you can't you can't do everything so it might be that notation goes um you know and i think that's common i, I work with a lot of senses uh, in my region and, and that happens a lot so yeah george completely empathize with you there lydia says not necessarily needed for written notation as long as a theoretical understanding is there yeah look at the mark scheme so we need to look at the mark scheme and is the mark scheme saying these learners for this thing can read the notes or can annotate a score or is it saying something different um i thought for something rhythmic like samba i'd have liked to include at least a rhythmic notation okay but if not in rhythmic notation what else could there have been uh, reassuring to know that others feel the same about their cohorts i'm glad you're going to leave at least some reassurance um yeah lydia says lead sheets are for a pop style it's totally adequate um Tom says, I would only expect something really specific. The scale was appropriate, maybe for classical music and for ornaments. Yeah. So I think, you know, they also did show a diagram of um, inversions, I think. I think the, the learner had obviously gone off, researched it, found, yes, Claire. So that's that's that would be really nice, wouldn't it? So let's say they, in the samba, they say there is this rhythm, rhythmic device called the 3-2 son clave. And here's a audio recording of me playing it. Da, 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 da. 
lovely. That would be really nice, wouldn't it? Um, any other things where we could have evidence like that maybe um, in this portfolio? Yeah, core progressions with Roman numerals, that might be appropriate. So um, there are other ways of them of showing it, but yeah, that would that could be an appropriate way of doing stuff. So I think, okay, so Helen says, mine will say, for example, for rock and roll, they're talking about the shuffle rhythm on drums, might find a picture of it in the notation include, this is what we've done in the teaching and learning phase. Yep, so that'll be fine. So you might have a screenshot of, um, a shuffle rhythm or the bow diddly beat or something that's a key feature of rock and roll um and they might just screenshot that and it would be really nice i think i can't remember who it was that said it claire it'd be really nice like if we had and here it is me playing or clapping or singing or playing one bar of the guitar even if it's just on one string and they're showing that they're shuffling or swinging or whatever that would be really good wouldn't it um so those specific examples um, okay, so I think we're all kind of seem to be on the same page that we think this is comprehensive. They've shown quite a lot of stuff. Um, no one's answered. What about the structure of how this has been displayed then? What, what do we think about how this learner has displayed their work? Obviously, we said there could be some video, they could do it by speaking, they could do, could, could do something different in terms of the actual format, but I think knowing my learners, I give them every opportunity to use loads of cool and funky ways of handing in their work and they all just want to give me a PowerPoint or a, a Word document. So if we're thinking that we're probably going to get it structured either on Word or on PowerPoint or Sway or Google Slides or something like that, what do we think? So George said clearly structured makes it easy to mark. Yep, I agree. I think that's good. Okay. Yeah, that might be that might be nice. That would be another way of doing it, wouldn't it? So they go, here's all the stuff about Samba, and here's what's in it. And oh look, by the way, here's my performance. And look, you can see there's the cross rhythms. And it might even be nice if they're you're breaking some of those bits down. Um, Tom says they've chosen one song to explore. I was imagining lots of different song examples to represent for each of the style. This way is more focused. Yeah. So in the teaching and learning. You might need to, you might need to cover one or more, and it might be because obviously the learners are going to get um, they're going to get the task, aren't they? And then they they go off to um, learn uh, to fulfil this assessment independently. Some of my more motivated learners might go off and go right. I know I've done reggae, um, but I'm going to go and find a different reggae song that I think is better suited to me being able to talk about stuff. So they might do some independent stuff. They don't necessarily have to do the one that you've shown them, um, but they, they they probably will. Um, would they get extra marks for demonstrating understanding through a recording themselves over just finding a YouTube link and posting it? So could other people answer this question before I do? Um, what do people think? Look at them, remember, look dispassionately and objectively at the mark scheme and then try and answer Alice's question. Do they get more marks for showing, like we said, that example of them playing the samba or if they put in a YouTube clip of a samba band and they've annotated it appropriately? Okay, so Helen says, yes, I thought the same. So from the PSA, I thought they might say the melody in Britpop has quite a narrow range, then find an example of it in a song from that style. Yeah. That's okay too. For task one, I'm not sure if this would make a difference as long as they're showing that understand the musical styles. I think, I think Lydia, I agree with you as well. I think different learners are going to do different things in different ways. You know your learners, you know the resources, you know the materials that you've got. Um, accessible for you you know their strengths and their weaknesses etc so for some of them it might be I mean it might be that you've got someone who is a really good guitarist and a really good communicator but they are terrible at IT skills and they can't write and their spelling isn't great and they just freeze when they're put in that situation if that learner wants to get a guitar set up a camera and go I'm going to play uh, four chord 
uh, structure and look here I'm playing it in a punk style and it's punk style because I've got um, you know a heavy pick and I've set my amp like this and I'm doing downstrokes and it's a fast tempo and I'm playing power chords and power chords means I'm playing the root fifth the octave and then suddenly they go and now I'm going to play that same chord sequence with a slightly different amp setting and I'm going to change the voicings of the guitar so there's more treble and I'm going to play it higher up the fretboard and you know I'm skanking it means I'm playing off the beat etc that would be brilliant but there's not many learners that are going to want to do that. But as long as they can still be making those links that we've seen, I think that's probably uh, probably appropriate. Tom says, what if they all use the piece we all studied? You'd have 23 documents all exploring the same song. Is that OK? We were worried the external person would question that because there's only so many ways to say they use synths and synth pops. So it could be that all the evidence and all the examples could be the same. So, yes, that. But that could be, you could say that would be the same in GCC where they've got set works, or it, you could say that would be the same um, in this SVing process where, you know, they're all, they've all been taught the same teaching and learning when it comes to composition, and then they get their composition. So I think first thing is to say that assessors, we know within our cohorts, within our year, you know, year nine, 10, 11 students, you can give them all exactly the same materials, the like same opportunities. What comes out of the mix is always different. But they remember they're going to have to do this portfolio approximately five hours of independent learning. I think it's likely some of them are going to be more motivated than others, will have more um, volition to do some extra research, are going to remember where their notes are, are going to have more organised notes, might have done more preparation. So I think it is very likely that even if you would all studied uh, exactly the same song and it got all exactly the same teaching and learning, we are still going to get that range coming out of those learners when they're sat there independently and trying to make these portfolios. So I really don't think that will be a problem and I think moderators will be able to see through that. Okay, so if I hope that's answered everyone's questions and if we've got any um, uh, any other queries or anything you want me to follow up on, please put them in the chat now. Um, otherwise, we'll move on to doing a, a scores on the doors exercise and seeing if we agree with the lead moderator. Just to say um, that point that you made there, uh, uh, Tom, about there's only so many ways to say they use synths in synth pop. It might be, though, that one learner might talk about different types of waveform or they might talk about the use of effects or they might talk about um, you know how different synthesizers were used by different artists or manipulated creatively by different artists so yes your weaker student might say synth pop was called synth pop because suddenly there were synths available and they could use them Whereas another artist might, uh, another learner might talk about how artists embrace that technology, embrace that production, used it creatively. You know, we're using things like filters and, um, you know, EQing in a creative way and what that means in terms of synthesis. Um, hopefully that's answered that question okay. All right. Oh, um, so. We mentioned to students about using the titles as a template for the genre. I use choose the genre and then melody gives, yeah, okay. So likely we'll have similar looking documents for our lower ability students. What do people think about this? What do you, what, what do you think? So if students have a template, can you just clear something up for me there? Do you mean you are gonna give them a template of a PowerPoint or you are going to, in the teaching and learning, be referring to these elements and almost coaching them or drilling them on it. And what do people think about those two things? Yeah, okay. So you've been mentioning the lessons and that's absolutely fine, isn't it? It's teaching and learning. I think some people refer to them as Dr. Smith or mad t-shirts or something. Um, those are the ones I've heard definitely on these trainings about how people organise those elements of music and you might be doing that all the way through Key Stage 3, it will obviously be on your curriculum maps etc of how you're going to be drilling those elements of music, that's absolutely fine and it might change the way that you're delivering Key Stage 3 
to maybe start talking about compositional elements and sonic elements and, and that might be just a, a slight tweak to your your delivery that you're going to have so that by the time they get to this point in year 10 they know what they are they memorize them they can refer to them in different ways um, when it comes to talking about how you listen to music absolutely fine what do people think about providing a um a blank powerpoint or a word document with headings can we have any any feedback on what people think about that helen says she will be Tom says, without that approach, some of us wouldn't be able to access the task. We'd be coaching them through how to structure it. Same as the eight mark question in the music industry or 10 mark with GCC. It would be similar responses or structures, though. Are we allowed to? Are we allowed to? I've done that purely for teaching learning, so it'll help them to take notes. No, I didn't. OK. So it seems to be a few people thinking, are we allowed? Some people think, well, I'm, I think I'm going to be. I, would this be class as a template? I think, I think that's probably to the point where we're thinking that's probably close to a writing frame, which is what we're trying to discourage at level two qualifications. So I think what we maybe want to do is um, reinforce that and try and teach the students to be um, structuring stuff in that way. We'd like to be um, doing some preparation um, and making sure that they can be referring to those things and obviously making sure that they hit those marks. Um, Helen says, mine will have next to no IT, ICT skills, so I'll have to provide something or some will be at real risk of getting nothing done. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if Jeffrey might be able to jump in on this and uh, give us a bit of clarification. We definitely can't um, encourage writing frames, but I wonder if... Um, a blank PowerPoint with those headings is appropriate. Um, whether those headings are the eight or, or nine, isn't it? Compositional and sonic features, or whether it is outline of, I think like this learner's done like outline of the genre, then they've done analysis of the song and then they've put relevant music theory. You know, are they two sides of the same coin? Um, from a moderator's point of view, I'm gonna mark what I see in front of me and I'm gonna mark it relate to the grid. That's all I'm going to say uh, in, that, in that sense. In terms of the teaching and learning and what happened before, yeah, so I'm pretty sure, so Jeffrey, Jeffrey said the same, so no, no writing frames or templates, I'm pretty sure it does as well. So that's not to say that in that teaching and learning we can't prepare our learners to have that. Um, okay, uh, I will, I will, uh, yeah, that's fine. A listening sheet with headings on, that's all part of the teaching and learning. We just need to make sure that they are used to that. I mean, you might want to, the PSA structure is not going to change. So it's always going to have this bit on there. So you might just need to teach them that hmm, maybe it would be a good idea to have a look at those things and make sure your portfolio is structured in that way. Okay, so... Um, Let's have a look at the marks then. So could we all put our mark for grid one and then a comma and then a mark for grid two? Remember out of 12. So if you thought, for example, that that learner um, was going to get three for grid one and four for grid two, it would be three comma four. So if we could all put our marks um, on there, then I'll reveal what the lead moderator's mark was. Okay, who's going to be brave and put the first mark in? Okay, Anna says 10, 11. George says 11, 10. We've got 9, 10 from Claire. Um, 11, is that 11 for both, Alistair? So is that 11 and 11? 10, and, oh, sorry, 10, 11. Yep, yeah. Alistair says 11 for both. Okay, is there a pattern here? Do people, 12 and 12 for Lydia? Andre's raised a hand. Um, would you like to come on the mic, Andre? Or was that an accident? That might have been an accident. Okay. 12 and 12. Any more for any more? Okay. So, ooh. Okay, 10, 11, Andrew says 11, 11. I'm thinking between 10, 11 for both. Not sure which, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so um, so I think from um, 
some of the back some chat that Jeffrey and I've just had in the background so yeah no 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 writing frames no prepared format templates or any other forms of scaffolding are allowed so um yeah if you think their ICT skills are going to prohibit them then that might just be part of the teaching learn that we need to do to get them exam ready I'm afraid okay um 11 and 11 right should we have a look at what the lead moderator said so the lead moderator da, 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 da. 11 and 11 so brilliant really well done everybody um sorry if that sounded patronizing but you know i did this exercise as well and i got the same grades uh, a lot of other people that i know that um are working for pearson in the assessment team all got the same grade as well so everybody really close so we're all definitely within some kind of tolerance there um, the commentary they've demonstrated a comprehensive knowledge for all four styles they've presented well-developed work um, their coverage for the use of instrumentation structure and rhythm in samba it's detailed and it's thorough for each style they've also analyzed that piece of music they've contextualized their knowledge the slides on relevant music theory are well developed some historical information Okay, so that has crept in a little bit, but that's okay. Um, even though we're not marking it, it does actually, the key focus is on these musical, compositional, sonic elements. Um, the work aligns with, aligns with Mark Band 4. So I think, I can't remember who it was, but someone's first word was comprehensive. Um, and um, the work did not achieve full marks as there was scope for their points to be linked. And I think this is what we talked about with a wider range of musical examples. So for example, they mentioned the bubble organ in reggae. It'd be nice for them to explain or illustrate exactly what that means. That's what we'd be looking at for, um, for full marks. So, um, so a tip, the template this learner has used has been effective, enable them to generate appropriate evidence. For each style, they provided an overview and analysis and the relevant music theory. This format has allowed the four styles to be covered with consistent depth and breadth. So we don't want to, um, for them to go in with any kind of writing frames, like we said, but if you have taught them in such a way that they can make those links and that they are themselves independently creating, um, those kind of um that kind of structure and making those links then that is uh, to be encouraged okay what i'm going to do is because we've had quite a, quite a good chat there and we've we've gotten under the hood a little bit of that and we've got 15 minutes today session left i'm going to go across to um learning aim b with a different learner so um just quickly oh, sorry just quickly for um Sorry, learning outcome B. There are three grids for learning outcome B. Um, so the first one is for 12 marks, which is the creative choices. So this is based on the understanding of techniques. So the creative choices those learners are making, and that's about their, um, if we think about that in terms of that's the way that they have used the elements of music to make those creative choices um, in their products. Um, a thoroughly considered and holistic use of pertinent musical elements in the creation of music. So to what extent have they looked at um, the elements of music and how do they relate to one another um, in terms of their creative? So this is more about their compositional choices that they've made, this first grid. So if you kind of think of it as, as that, those kind of compositional choices or those creative choices or in their performance, it's those, those performance choices that they've made, that's out of... Um, out of 12 marks. Then the um, the second grid for learning outcome B or grid four, um, mark band four, sorry. Um, that is, so grid four, I was correct the first time. That's how well have they applied these experimental techniques in the realization. So this is um, rather than kind of the elements of music, to what extent have they created and explored and come up with something a bit different or something new, something original, something that's theirs rather than, um, and I think this is also where it comes into someone mentioned the, the theme. There are some learners where, and you'll know you have these learners in your class, no matter what brief you give them, no matter what task you give them, you're going to get G in root position on the keyboard, and I'm just going to play them. Um, and, and that's what you're going to get. Okay, so... Um, this second grid is kind of like to what extent have they experimented explored been a bit a little bit um you know a little bit creative in their choices um and then the final grid is how well have they actually applied these how have they applied these music realization techniques and that includes performance skills uh, ensemble skills and um 
production, composition uh, and recording skills and to what extent are those ideas um, show that cohesive use of those elements that you can see that there is a drive through to fulfil a, a stated intention. Okay, so I'm going to play you this video that this is a submission by this learner. Oops. Um, and hopefully you can all hear it. Uh, it's, it's two and a half minutes. This is all the learner submitted. There was nothing else. Okay, um, let me know if anyone wants to, uh, to watch that again. Um, okay, so just before I come to your question there, Tom, um, there was a question um, before that I've just noticed from um, Diane Ave, uh, who said, we've been told they can bring notes into the exam. What does that look like? Written notes, teach documents from the lesson. Yep, so teaching and learning notes are absolutely fine, plus they'll have access to the internet to research this task. So so that's, that's not a problem at all. Um, so, the notes they've made in teaching and learning, it could be some handouts, annotated handouts, whatever, that's fine, but nothing can come in and come out of the room whilst they are um, during that assessment. So they can't have access to, for example, if they're doing on a PowerPoint, you've got to make sure they don't have access to that when they're at home. So you are saying they've only done that work in the five hours where you've seen them. Hope that makes that clear. So you might just need to create different drives and areas on Google Classroom and Office 365, etc. Okay, um, Thomas said, can everyone in that recording use it as evidence? Yep, so just remembering the caveat that this was work that was created for the Tech Award, what we want to see is probably for learning outcome B, learners have got seven hours um, and they've got, well, this is, uh, I'm just answering your question right now, Lydia, how can students make ensemble decisions during the assessment? So it might be, we're prob that is probably what we're listening to then, I think was a whole class performance. Um, what might happen is they get this um, this brief and it says, you know, contrast, and they might go, oh, right, you know, we've got a little bit where we did African drumming. Um, I'd really like to do some kind of polyrhythmic activity and I'm going to grab this student and this student and we're going to do our own little composition, 30 second composition now. I'm hoping 
with my learners, you know, I'm teaching them some of the styles at the moment and they are, you know, fresh out of year nine. They're only a couple of months out of year nine and we're doing some of that teaching and learning now. They're coming up with some little pro little products now. By the time they're actually submitting this, which is April of next year, I'm hoping they're better musicians, they're better ensemble musicians and they're better composers and can make better creative decisions. So I really, really hope my, dis my learners they might have access to the African drumming circle that I've just done with them a couple of weeks ago, but I hope when it gets to March, they're going, well, oh, we can do better than that. But, you know, I'm a bit embarrassed about that. We can improve on that. And they make the decision to create a specific product for, for this to be handed in. And yes, it's fine for multiple, for multiple learners within that to be, um, to be submitted and to be uh, marked accordingly. Um, obviously, it's up to 30 seconds. So it might be that they just go, oh, we're going to do just the chorus of that track. Or, um... yeah, so Alistair, probably the vocalist would pres presumably score higher. Yeah, they can compose together, definitely. Yeah, they can, you know, for component one, um, component one, this can be collaborative. They can use, okay, so. This is so Lydia's asked, can they use previously recorded material that has been created during teaching learning time? I'm going to give you an example. Yeah, that would be nice. They could do a minimalism piece together. You could get the glocks out and they could have a, do a piece of minimalism together. It's got to be driven by them, obviously. Helen, it can't be a um, teacher led activity. You want, you want to hope that they're coming up to you and saying, Miss, can we get the glocks? Can we? get into that practice room or that corner of the classroom and can we do a piece of minimalism together and, and you know I think that would be fine as long as it's them that's driving it. Um, Lydia asked a question about can they use previously recorded material that has been created during teaching and learning time. I'm going to give you an example um, of something that has happened in, in our um, in, in my trust and I want you guys to know whether you think this is appropriate or not. So when learning about um, uh, a particular DAW that the students are learning on, the teacher has given them um, the, the first two lessons have been how to program grid, uh, drum beats using the drum grid and they're teaching them how to click in MIDI information and different patterns. They've provided them with a spreadsheet which has got little blocks coloured in um, and how to do a disco beat, a hip hop beat, a drum and bass beat, a techno beat, a house beat and the learners have gone off and have created two to four bars in all of those styles in a drum machine and saved them as little projects in their um, piece of music software. Can those learners, when it comes to um, learning outcome B in the spring, can those learners then take go and find those tracks, those projects that have got maybe a two to four bar drum pattern in them and then finish them off referring to the brief for learning outcome B. Could they then expand those drum beats, make them into an eight or a 16 bar pattern, add a bass line, some chords, a melody, and finish that off as a track? Is Do you think that is within the spirit of the qualification and appropriate? Yeah, so yeah, using a step sequencer. So have they, they've, they've got a step sequencer, right? So they've, they've got all these starting points. They've done the history of dance music through learning how to program drum beats. This is what a teacher within our trust has done. And these learners have got in a folder somewhere, six projects called hip hop, drum and bass, techno, house, I think. And each one just has an example template drum pattern that has been clicked in by the students to teach them how to use it. In this case, it was Ableton to teach them how to click in Ableton on a drum machine. Teaching them the basics of MIDI. So Claire says yes, definite yes from Claire. Anybody else want to back up Claire and say, yeah, definitely they can do that. Just a way of recording MIDI information, same as using practical recordings. So wow, yeah, so it could be they've got an audio track. Yeah, that's a good point, Tom. So it might be they've done the blues and they've recorded um, them on a piano playing 12 bar and F once through. 
is that kind of thing allowed for them to then go oh actually i'm going to go i remember i did that i'm going to come back to it and the topic for this one is contrast i could do a really nice contrasting 12 bar um and i'm going to take that first 12 bar and i'm going to put this beat behind it and i'm going to take the second 12 bar and do something different and change the instrumentation and this composition in a blues style based on that work i did four months ago as a little seed that i planted i'm going to finish it off for this particular task what do we think Shannon says no. Claire said yes. So what do we think? They're developing their ideas, so I would hope yes, says Anna. Okay. What would um Tom says yes. Okay, so there's a few a uh, few people saying yes. So Shannon, um, so you can use a pre-existing audio media track and develop it as long as they take it in, but don't bring it out. Seems like a template. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I mean, it's a template is maybe not given to the learner, is it? Because they've probably created that in um, their teaching and learning phase, and they've probably that's probably something they've come through through technology. Uh, sorry, through uh, teaching and learning, they've developed something like a short bit when they've been learning about a particular style, and they're developing it in response to the brief. Looking at those thirty six marks that are available for learning outcome B, that is probably appropriate for those that I for those learners they're developing more ideas they're putting more in in response to this in within this assessment window you're not giving them any guidance within those seven approximately seven hours of how to compose that you're not telling them what to do they just happen to have something that they've started before and they're finishing off in response to this brief okay so i think that is fine but going and finding um yeah that's true so in quite a lot of these doors nowadays a lot of things effectively are templates. I mean, I think in, in quite a lot, you can just download a, a group of samples that will make you sound like you know how to program Afrobeat, for example, and you can just drag them all in. So, or the, the, the logic drummer, for example, the bane of the bane of my life when I'm trying to mark exams for, for students, have they programmed that beat in or have they just dragged the, the logic artificial intelligence drummer into onto a track so um all these things are quite difficult but um they could open a composition and then finish it i think that's the point the point is we don't want them to go back and go oh back in october we did a whole class performance of a rock and roll song i'm just going to submit that for learning out can be and oh i've just got uh, this minimalist composition on sibelius i'm just going to hand in the score for that that's fine we want to see that in those seven hours they are doing something to create the product for the brief that they are making those decisions, that they are making those creative choices, that they're using the elements. So in terms of this learner, so I know we've gone on, off on a bit of a tangent, we've just got a couple of minutes left. In terms of this learner, what do we think? What band are we gonna put this learner in? Let's get the mark grid up again. So are they consistent? Um, where, where are we here? So do we think for learning outcome B, applying the understanding of techniques to create music so if you remember there was that drum and bass piece and there was the film music and then there was the okay so alistair's giving them two one lydia's saying limited um so down here so is that limited across all three mark bands do you think lydia so limited in terms of their understanding of the techniques limited in terms of their use of the techniques and limited in turn in in terms of their kind of um how well they've executed that. One, middle, two, one, two. Yes, all three. So we're saying limited for four, four, four. Adequate, I think, but the lowest within that, low to adequate. Okay. Um, what do you think would have supported us a little bit more to maybe make better choice, to be able to hopefully give this learner more? Is there anything that we could have had extra that might have helped us move this learner up out of that you know no one's saying that they're beyond that second mark band low adequate people are saying so everyone's saying around that four mark for all three competencies could have added screenshots of video yeah so screenshots would have been nice on that drum and bass one wouldn't it um just a couple of screenshots saying this is my idea this is where i program that in and um, supporting explanation to justify ideas yeah would have been good some kind of commentary holistically so we mark holistically across those three pieces what do you think um the the, the drumming 
did that add anything to our overall grade or did that pull that down do we think so were they but essentially what i'm asking you is were the three products evenly um were they even in terms of how well the learner did was the learner equally successful across all three okay so claire says yeah all three were pretty even i can't remember what claire said um, anna says yeah pretty equal so um so yeah so we we might have seen a learner who can then is a, a very good drummer maybe they're not very good at composing perhaps they're not very good at programming um alice thinks the drumming pulled it down the kick and the snare were on the wrong beats for any of the genres explored i did find that really frustrating that the snare was on i think the snare was on one wasn't it all the way through and um, occasionally we're doing a four to the floor um basic drumming yeah basic drumming not stylistically accurate we get a feeling with this learner that they've just given us, like I said before, they've just given us what they've got. So that film music, you know, I think they probably would have given whatever the film clip was, I think they'd have given us that composition. You know, whatever the stimulus was, we would have got that. It was a couple of arpeggios, I think, and a couple of sounds that maybe they'd found that they liked. The drum and bass track was sounding a bit out of control. Um, you know lacking in that kind of finesse and detail so in terms of um film music no attention to hit points moments yeah exactly so what we're seeing on screen that that learner just gave us whatever they had at that time i think so let's have a look at what the lead moderator said and whether he agrees uh, they agree with us um uh, so this is this one i think yes Okay, so we didn't get any supporting material. That was all we got. Um, this was, if you want to have a look at it, this is what the learner wrote. So a different format. They had a couple of YouTube links, but it was all all written. The composition might have been done, then the video added. That's kind of how I felt to me. Yeah, same, Helen. That's what I was meaning about it. I've really got that feeling. I've, you know, every year I have a learner who does that, who just kind of goes, this is what, this is what I've got. And I'll just stick a video over it. And that's film music. Um, Okay, so for task two, um, yeah, four, four and five. So um, four for that kind of the choices that we're making in terms of the elements, four for the creative choice they were making and five for how well it was executed. So the work submitted here aligns with marking band two, which I think is what most of us are saying. The three music products are adequate, but they are more limited than competence that pulls them down to so the lower end of the marking band. Drum and pace bass piece has some stylistic um, accuracy. Some of the music elements have been used um, adequately, but stops abruptly, affects the whole overall impression. Film music piece is appropriate for the video clips. This is what the lead moderator says, but again, lacks development contrast in terms of uh, musical and sonic elements. And I think this is the point that, um, uh, that Alice was making. You know, the, the, when the film, when the image changes, the music doesn't necessarily synchronize, not in keeping with some of these conventions. Performance is limited, but adequate. The drum part is very basic, not in keeping with those conventions. So the drum and bass piece is potentially moving up toward marking grid three. There's some evidence of competence, but overall is compromised by the limited dr drumming performance. Assessors must apply the mark scheme using the principles of best fit. So in our case, in music and in other creative sectors, this is where that kind of best fit comes in. Um, so the theme in the PSA should be referenced in learners' work. Work that is generic in nature is unlikely to attract high marks. Learners should take a creative and thoughtful approach when deciding what material to produce in response to the given theme. So that's why I was talking earlier on about what if they take some of these create, creative seeds that were maybe planted during the teaching and learning process, is that okay? Well, they're gonna get more marks if they're able to then manipulate that to the brief. Okay, I think, um, We've reached the end of our time, um, and I hope people have had any questions answered that are required. I'm going to stay on the call um, for a little bit longer. Um, Jeffrey's kindly put a um, link in the chat as to uh, how you can contact him. I'm conscious that schools will be closing and people will be wanting to get their tea, etc. So um, I'm going to switch my camera on and. Um, like I say, I'll just hang around for five minutes or so and allow people to um, 
uh, to ask any questions so raise your hand if you want to um i think jeffrey's probably going to stay uh stay as well hopefully um but for everybody else thank you very much i hope it was useful there will be more for component two we just as you can imagine we just can't fit it into the two hours um and so what we're going to do is record a component two um video and that will be sent out to anybody that attended the training in this autumn series um I just thought when delivering this and the, the experience I've had delivering it previously, trying to get component two in as well is just really hard. <laughs> so uh, the thing that most people seem to be delivering component one, um, we're doing that. Glad it's been helpful, Suzanne and Lydia. Thank you. Um, if you have colleagues that haven't been able to attend, then obviously feel free to forward them the video, the recording when it comes. But there are some more events coming up. There's another couple that are going to be on the calendar soon. Um, Thanks, Tom. Glad it was helpful. Thanks, Anna. Safe journey, everyone. So if um, if you want to leave, then you just need to put, if you just cross off the window um, and we'll wait until everybody's gone.